Hello learners, myself Dr. Taruna Malhotra. Previously, I told you about how children learn and what are the effective methods of teaching and learning. Today, we will discuss about assessment of learning, assessment for learning and assessment as learning. The role of school has changed. Previously, schools sorted students from the highest to the lowest achievers, that is, some succeeded at learning while others tumbled into chronic failure. But schools have evolved into places where all students are expected to meet increasingly rigorous academic standards. It was said by Stiggers. Basically, our students have two basic needs. First one is the need to feel that they belong means they should be connected to each other. And second is need to feel competent. They should have self-confidence as well as they should have the knowledge of their caliber and how to use that. When a teacher starts teaching, he plans with some end in the mind like what is it that my students must know, understand and be able to do or how will I know that they know, understand and be able to do. If students know what they are to learn, you increase the chances that they will learn. It was said by Voy. Now we will discuss about planning pyramid. A teacher plans that how the teacher will teach his or her students that by the way of teaching, some students will learn these concepts or skills or most students will learn these concepts or skills or all students will learn these concepts or skills. The primary purpose of assessment and evaluation is to improve learning. Now we will discuss about what is assessment. Assessment is a systematic process of gathering, interpreting and acting upon data related to student learning and experience for the purpose of developing a deep understanding of what students know, understand and can do with their knowledge as a result of their educational experience. The process culminates when assessment results are used to improve subsequent learning. This definition was given by Huba and Fried in 2000. Now what are the purposes of assessment? Basically, assessment helps to motivate, it creates learning opportunities, it helps in giving feedback and it also gives grade. Assessment should be an integral part of the learning process rather than something that is tacked on at the end. Now we will discuss about types of assessment. We will discuss about three types of assessment, formative assessment, summative assessment and diagnostic assessment. Now what is formative assessment? Formative assessment means those activities that student and teachers undertake to get information about students learning, giving students feedback which they can use to improve their performance. Summative assessment means judgment made on work that results in the student being awarded a grade may include formative elements. Assessment designed to be used to determine grades or marks. Basically, summative assessment is always done at the end of the course. You can see formative is used continuously throughout the coursework, whereas summative is used at the end. Diagnostic assessment. Diagnostic assessment tells us what students need to learn helps a teacher in finding out in which way and what is to be taught. Is there any difference among the process and objective of assessment in different situations? For this, we have to go three main pur purposes for assessment. That is assessment of learning, assessment for learning and assessment as learning. What is assessment for learning? Assessment for learning occurs when teachers use inferences about student progress to inform their teaching, it can be said formative. Assessment of learning. Assessment of learning occurs when teachers use evidence of student learning. 
to make judgments on student achievement against goals and standards that is summative assessment and assessment as learning. Assessment as learning occurs when students reflect on and monitor their progress to inform their future learning goals. It also can be said formative. Now we will discuss in detail about assessment for learning. Assessment is effective when it is designed specifically to help students improve their learning and for that assessment needs to be more frequent and informal coupled with timely feedback mechanism. This type of assessment is termed as assessment for learning. Now we will discuss about the objectives of assessment for learning. Initially we will start with how assessment for learning is related with student. It helps to make the students how they are doing, understand what they need to do to improve and how to get there. Need to be motivated to become active learners to continuously improve their learning. To equip every teacher to make well founded judgments about students attainment understand the concepts and principles of progression, know how to use their assessment results to plan for improvement of learning of each student, particularly of those who are not fulfilling their potential. To have in every school a structured and systematic assessment systems for making regular, useful, manageable and accurate assessments of students and for using the results of the assessment in tracking the learning progress of the students. Next is to make every parent or guardian know how their child is doing, what they need to do to improve and how they can support the child and their teachers. Basically assessment for learning comprises two phases, initial or diagnostic and second one is assessment and formative assessment. Now what is diagnostic assessment? An assessment made before the learning of a unit commences in order to determine what a student does and does not know about a topic. Helps to identify where your students are in their learning and what course of action appropriate to learning levels of the students are needed to be taken for continuing or improving their learning. For example, if you are planning to teach the different states of India in class 6th, you need to know whether the students are well conversant in using in the in using the atlas. If you find most of the students in the class know how to use an atlas, you can engage majority of class in working on an application of using atlas while you can work with a small group on how to use an atlas. Now formative assessment. Formative assessment through which the teacher can gather data during the learning process when the class progresses through a unit of study to determine a student's knowledge and skills including learning gaps. The teacher can use the results of formative assessment to guide learning and make timely change in the teaching strategy to suit the needs of the students. Considering the example of using Atlas, the teacher can provide feedback about the work the students have completed using the Atlas and provide ideas for adjusting, rethinking and articulating their learning. Now characteristics of assessment for learning, it is responsive to all learners by identifying areas of strength and need of each and every student. It is descriptive in nature and is not judgmental and hence not evaluative. Through the use of high quality feedback, it informs students about what they have done well, where they have had difficulty and what they need to be differently to improve their work. Since the learners has to be provided feedback in order to improve the ongoing process of learning. The assessment is frequent 
and continuous in the learning process. It causes students to reflect upon their work and learning and take specific actions to improve them. It expects students to make errors and directs them to examine these errors in order to improve their learning. It involves students in structured self and peer examination of their work. It is planned and used in ways that it provides support to sustain students learning so that ultimately they can demonstrate improved performance in the assessment of learning that will be used for grading and reporting purposes. The big five principles of assessment for learning have been given by the UK assessment reform group in 1999 which are as the provision of effective feedback to students, the active involvement of students in their own learning, adjusting teaching to take account of the results of assessment, recognition of the profound influence assessment has on the motivation and self-esteem of students both of which are critical influences on learning. Next, the need for students to be able to assess themselves and understand how to improve. Now, let's have a look on approaches of assessment for learning. First one is teacher-led assessment. Teacher-led assessment uses a wide range of methods like written or verbal testing, interaction with students, assignments, observation of students' activities, etc. Learner self-assessment in which self-reflection on, on performance and on others' judgments is done by one own self. Then peer assessment means assessment of classmates on the response and performance of the learner. Next is computer-based assessment where using specially designed software. Now we will know how to plan assessment for learning. Firstly, specify the purpose of assessment appropriate to learning outcomes of the concepts, unit or topic to be transacted in the classroom. Then have clear picture of the classroom while the AFL is effectively taking place like words, pictures, illustrations or examples of students work are displayed around the classroom. Students are involved in collaborative assessment of their work with peers or teachers. Ongoing feedback from the teacher and other students are taking place. Students and teachers are using student friendly language when assessing their work means at that time they share an informal relationship. Now assessment for learning and teachers. Teacher establishes a classroom culture that encourages interaction and the use of assessment tools. Occurs throughout a learning sequence and is planned and teachers design teaching and learning activities. Assessment for learning involves teacher sharing learning intentions and explicit assessment criteria with students. Involves teachers and students setting and monitoring student progress against learning goals. It requires teachers to ascertain students prior knowledge, perceptions and misconceptions. It involves teachers focusing on how students learn and how to scaffold their learning. It involves teachers adapting teaching practice to meet student needs, provides sensitive and constructive feedback to students on their performance, involves teachers making formative use of summative assessment. Now we will discuss about assessment of learning. It is the use of a task or an activity to measure, record and report on a student's level of achievement in regards to specific learning expectations 
these are often known as summative assessments it refers to those assessments that is oral performance and written or combination of two or more of these mods that occur at or near the end of an instructional unit or term one can judge the ability of students to synthesize and demonstrate the concepts or experiences which they have acquired during the period of instruction in total assessment of learning enables students to demonstrate what they know and can do assessment of learning describes the extent to which a student has achieved the learning goals including the standards it uses teacher judgments about student achievement at a point in time is supported by examples or evidence of student learning it ensures consistent teacher judgments through moderate processes it is used to plan future learning goals now tools and strategies which are used in the assessment of learning in the assessment of learning the teacher has to use a variety of tools and strategies depending on the nature of the task to be assessed purposefully depending on the amount and time of information required examples are tests using various types of questions anecdotal records means description of important events in the life of the student related to the task or process being assessed and rating scales checklists observation students response which can be written or oral analysis of the students work discussions with students now what is the role of a teacher in assessment of learning so a teacher must ensure that the objective of the assessment task or assignment are clearly understood by the students a teacher must prepare reasonable time limits for the completion of the tasks or assignments a teacher should be sensitive to the challenges faced by some students in completing the task or assignment a teacher must collect sufficient evidence on which the teacher makes decisions now let's have a look on the difference between assessment of learning and assessment for learning assessment of learning is summative in nature and assessment for learning is formative in nature assessment of learning happens after learning takes place whereas assessment for learning is an integral part of learning process assessment of learning in it information is gathered by teacher whereas in assessment for learning information is shared with the learner information is usually transferred into marks under assessment of learning whereas in assessment for learning information is available on quality of learning in assessment of learning comparisons with performance of others are made whereas in assessment for learning it is linked to learning intentions and success criteria in assessment of learning it looks back on past learning whereas in assessment for learning it looks forward to the next stage of learning now we will discuss about assessment as learning when we gather new experiences while assessing our own performance or performance of others the processes of learning and assessment lose the line of demarcation between them in such instances assessment becomes a learning process according to lorna m errell in 2006 assessment as learning is based on the conviction that the students are capable of becoming adaptable flexible and independent in their learning and decision making assessment as learning involves students monitoring their learning and using feedback from this monitoring to make adjustments and changes 
to their skills and understandings. Assessment as learning establishes students' roles and responsibility in relation to their learning and assessment. It empowers students to consider strategies for learning and taking action. It involves student in self-assessment and peer assessment. It promotes students self-esteem and self-confidence through an understanding of one's own caliber. It develops students capacity to reflect on the learning and to contribute to their future learning goals. It enhances students lifelong learning skill. It emphasizes the process of learning as it is experienced by the student. Assessment as learning provides a variety of opportunity for the students to reflect on his or her learning through the process of metacognition, brainstorming, group discussion, collaborative learning situations through peer and self-assessment. As a teacher, the best thing that you can do is to convince your students for self-assessment and peer assessment, which in turn helps them to use assessment as learning. Now, how self-assessment helps students? Let's have a look. Self-assessment helps students to reflect on their own learning, means the student is able to peep insight how much the student has caliber identify their strengths and areas where they need to improve using clear criteria related to the expectations and achievement levels means the student is able to assess his strengths as well as which area is required to be improved then set goals and identify next steps for learning after peeping in inside the student is able to set goals to move forward develop skills in metacognition become independent and self-directed students self-assessment select work for their portfolios that represent their progress and best efforts over the time now Peer assessment, how it helps students, it helps students to consolidate their learning through dialogue and interaction with their peers when they discuss with their friends or have interactions among this, among them. Peer assessment helps in learning how to give and receive constructive explicit feedback based on clear criteria means they will share their feelings, they will have critical understanding of each other. Then practice the concepts and skills explicitly modeled and taught through the activities and tasks. So this is all about assessment for learning, assessment of learning and assessment as learning which are a part of our learning process. I want to give a message, clean city. Clean India, Green Word, Go Green. Thanks.